Hi, I am Nick Thune. I love my kid, but that doesn't mean I'm taken. You know, we have an open relationship. <laughs> I'm his friend. Yes. I'm his best friend. <laughs> no friendship today, girls. You know, like not here at Legoland. My ex-wife, this is where it all went down here. <laughs> you got first place in the league. You're getting a little cocky here. Get back in your Toyota, get out, and ask me again in a normal way. <laughs> <laughs> and it also just picked up a rogue oh. Vegas binky and had it in his mouth. Okay, it's a kid. You love this kid. <laughs> right, you know? Welcome to I Love My Kid, but your weekly escape from nonstop laundry. I am here, of course, with my with my co-hosts, Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia. I'm Kurt Brownler. Hi, guys. What's up? What's up? How is everyone? Pretty good. Check in. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, we had uh, some friends over this weekend, and one of our friends was there without his child because he lives in New York. Mm-hmm. And and Conrad and um, his little girl are like one week apart, and so oh. it was like really fun. He like you know kept calling Conrad his daughter's name, and like he just like loved playing with him. But then he was saying like about traveling and I, you know I was like has she traveled and he was like oh yeah a ton but like we bribe her on flights and we um she can only have b a g e l s on flights <laughs> that's a that's the bribe and i was like bagel? <laughs> and i truly goes oh, i go oh conrad's had two today like i was like oh no i am giving him bribe level food <laughs> Constantly? No, no, no. I think that that person's a little weird. Like, okay. if my kid ate bagels, I would. That would be the only thing they ate. But like, bagels are great. Conrad, yeah. bagels are great. Only doesn't seem bagels. like bribe enough. Oh. That seems like that. That's a perfect. Low yeah. That's okay. great. Okay, it was. It's not like you're giving them a, a Twix bar twice a day. No, but you it's know, a bagel. That's you know beautiful. when you have those. Like, I I know a family and they were like, we do not eat bananas. The kids cannot have bananas. Why? There's too much sugar. And I was There's like, too much what? sugar and bananas. But like these are th- sometimes you come in contact with this and you go, oh no, I'm making a. A banana bagel monster, you know. <laughs> All he wants is bananas and bagels. Well, we no, this, no kid, you're, these you're, parents you're, at this play date yesterday or at a birthday party, and uh, they were talking about how they're bribing their kid, their son's like maybe three, uh, to like potty train. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that he'll like the bribe is. All four burners of the stove on at the same time. <laughs> what, that's the and I was like, you stay away from that kid. <laughs> I was like, that that's is, like, that is wild. There's going to be that's like a gas so, leak. That is so <laughs> crazy. It's the only way you can get this kid to shit. Guess what? Just let him shit himself. Just let him shit himself <laughs> yeah, yeah. for a little bit. Fire is my reward. <laughs> yeah, that is. We're all trying. I mean, uh, like, yeah, we all, we've all, all fucked up and we're <laughs> yeah. all trying. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, all trying. True. Fire parents, no you're judgment. right. No judgment. Bagel no judgment. Bagel parent, parents. you're the best. They seem like very yeah, nice yeah. parents. Bagel parent, you nice. did a great job <laughs> keeping bagels away from your children. The evil bagel. <laughs> oh, man. Well, today we're speaking about the challenges of befriending your kids' friends' parents. So we're going to be talking about it with the absolutely wonderful Nick Thune. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm very, very excited. Very funny. Nick Thune is a he's a funny man. He's a nice man. I'm excited to chat with him. I think he has one child. Yeah, so? a yeah. son. A son, I believe. And I think he's like 11 or 12 at this point. Oh no. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. You know what? No need to guess because we can ask him. <laughs> He'll be here in moments. He's he's friend age. He's friend age. Conrad, no friends. Yeah, no friends. They just that's like you just play near each other. I'm his friend. Yeah. I'm his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I'm good friends with myself. <laughs> So uh, uh, we're going to start, of course, today, like we start every episode with a little thing called Circle Time. And today I'm going to be telling the story in Circle Time. So we went to Legoland for Gus's fourth birthday. Mm -hmm. And Legoland is cool, especially for kids, for younger kids. It's like, I think, much better than Disney. It's uh, it's like all about building stuff, you know. So it's like that's a cool idea. Everybody's like building their own thing, and uh, and then you get there and there's just like a kid with like aviator sunglasses on and two Ninjago swords on his back, just like wipe his nose and then yeah. shove it in the communal build bucket. <laughs> and then you realize like, oh, what we're really building here is immunity, you know. But it was a really fun day and having fun. Uh, Olive like midway through the day started just calling me rookie. <laughs> 
I don't know where what? she like, picked it up, but she's like, hey, rookie, I'm going to need another churro, pal. <laughs> she was just doing it so confidently that I just started like uh, like responding to it. She'd be like, hey, rookie. I'd be like, what's up, boss? <laughs> like a grizzled, like major league baseball coach. Yeah. <laughs> hey, rook. <laughs> and so, um, and then of course, like, m- I'm not kidding. When I say... We got there half hour before the park opened because we didn't realize we thought it opened later. So we got there half hour early and like there's a like a hotel and like you can play in the hotel and there's like Legos and stuff. And and like within, I don't know, I'm not kidding, seven seconds of like walking into the hotel, Olive finds this friend who's also a six year old girl, Chelsea, not a real name. And stranger. Uh, stranger. OK. And then it's just like there's like, boom. Hands together, best friends immediately, oh, God. and then we're like, "All right, let's go to the park." Um, and then Ch- and and Olive's just like, "I'm with Chelsea." And then Olive is like, "She loved this. She loves to do this. She just like has j- just joins other families, and like finds another child, and then she'll find parents, and she'll be like, "Well, I'm like part of your family now." I don't know. Oh, it's like her pastime. Gosh. It's like a hobby she has to leave our family <laughs> and go with another family. Yeah, like reverse Joe Dirt. Yeah, she's like, I gotta get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and then of course it's like 30 minutes till the park opens because we get there and we think it's gonna, but then we're with Chelsea's, so we're like walking up with Chelsea's family and it's just like, uh huh. And we're just making chit chat, small talk, whatever. But then it's like, okay, well, you know, Olive, they've got plans yeah. for today and we've got plans for today. You guys have plans, right? Just asking them to like, please yeah. say like, yes, we have plans so we don't have to hang out with a stranger's family all day. And they're just like, we got no plans. We were here yesterday, so we kind of saw stuff. And I was just like, oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I was like so annoyed. I gave you the out. I we gave you out. the out and you didn't take <laughs> it. And now we're like, all right. So now we're with Chelsea's fucking family. Family. And I don't on know these Gus's people. On Gus's birthday. On Gus's birthday. And like, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, the only thing I could do, like, they're holding hands, walking, being so cute. Like, what a, like, slap their hands and be like, <laughs> no friendship today, girls. You know, like, not here at Legoland. But you're saying it's so cute, but it's also like, you don't know this girl. I don't know So her. it's like cute and also a little strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be like, you know, it's, you've jumped intimacy levels. Right, exactly. It's like instant best buds. Yeah. And so we're like waiting for the park to open with these like strangers and and I'm sure they're fine people. I am sure they're very nice. And but it's just like I don't want to talk to them, and I don't want to ask them about their jobs, and I don't want to ask them anything at all. I just want to like be with my family at Legoland, which we're paying a lot of money to go do. And so then we like start entering, and so then we start going to like things, and then we like get to a ride right after the park opens. We go to one ride. And we're like, okay, no, you have to leave Chelsea because there's only four people in this thing. So we mm-hmm. get in, us, we go through. And then, of course, like right afterwards, they're just waiting. They're just waiting at the oh. exit for us. And I'm just like, Ch- come on, guys. So then we go to the next thing. It's like in the Ninjago area. And it's like, they're all just like playing. And so then the kids like kind of like start like splitting up and everything. And then I just like faked a back injury. And I was like, we got to go back to the hotel. And I grabbed a back injury. <laughs> a back injury? Of all I went down a slide and I kind of like hurt my back a little bit. But I was just like, oh, guys, I think we need to go back to the hotel. Sorry. And we're like, here's our number. You know, text us later. We'll never respond to that. And then we like left. And... You had to leave? Oh, we left. Yeah, you... yeah, yeah. We had <laughs> you... to just left. We, well, we didn't leave the park. We just went back. We went away from them. And then you didn't see them again. Right. To be like, oh, I, yeah, no, they got me on a wheelchair. No, uh, no, we never, they, <laughs> luckily they never texted us. We never texted yeah. them. It was like totally fine. They got um, the, they got the hint yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah. This like, this poor man flopped like a <laughs> soccer player to avoid us. Okay, I guess we won't text him back. <laughs> How long did you keep up this ruse of having No, the, just like, oh, oh, you know, it was like, it was, it was very minor. <laughs> okay, you know okay. what I mean? I'm just like, oh, and I feel, I think we gotta go sit down for a little bit but it was great seeing you guys text us later you know we'll probably be around and i was just like gotta get out of here like i do have to admire olive's ability to make a friend like that quickly it's essentially what we're all trying to do yeah 
Anytime we go to like a bar, just like dumping yeah. enough alcohol into our aging, rigid brains <laughs> yeah. to like release enough dopamine for us to be like, you want to get lunch tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But these people you were able to rid yourself of. Yeah. Of her friends in school. Yeah. Those people, you like don't... those aren't vacation friends. Exactly. Those are, these end up, I know one of my brother's all of his best friends, my mom was friends with all of their moms. Oh, and it was wow. actually, like, I think nice for him because then, like, people could go on, like, trips together. Mm-hmm. But then they also, like, knew each other's shit constantly. Yeah. Um, And she wasn't really friends with any of my... Yeah, like, one of my friends we were, like, family friends with. But, like, my parents' social circle now, even at close to 70, yeah. very much is... Their children's friends' parents is that's what that's what I was. I've been talking with friends who have older children, mm-hmm. and they're like, just find cool parents of friends that like your kids like because that's what your friend group is going to be. It's about to be. Yeah, yeah. And it's like because that's what it is in the future. And and I think you can have other. You know, this is my college friend, and this is you know, you have yeah. other. But it's like this is who you're going to be spending the bulk of parties socializing like if if you go to these things that's who the crew is gonna yeah. be and even i've noticed going to my friends kids parties where like you know year one and two it's just comedians yeah year five and six i'm like who's that fucking guy <laughs> you know and it's like oh yeah their kid has friends now and now there's just a weird guys here uh. <laughs> And I hate it because I'm like, you don't know. I'm the OG crew. But it's like I see those children less and less. Weird guy knows the kid better than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Sonny has this really dear friend. And they're so cute together. And the dad is the biggest dud I've ever met Uh in my life. And I cannot talk to him. He is actively trying to make me laugh because he knows I'm a comedian. (sighs) And he is un funny it is a nightmare and so sometimes i'll just like stay in the car a little longer so i don't have to see him at pickup <laughs> like it's like and because the, the kid's yeah. awesome the dad's a dud and i can't i can't handle it and i'm like i don't know maybe we have to move or something because i cannot stand 20 I do, years I, of this I, guy i remember like my mom having like my mom me and my very best friend uh, from childhood, I remember like my our parents used to hang out, and then they just decided that they would not hang out anymore. Mm-hmm. And then it was like they just never hung out again. And it was a very marked like this is it. It ends here. And I think now I understand more. Like oh, that's what it was. Yeah. They just didn't gel, and we <laughs> were the ones who like really liked each other. Yeah. When you do find one. And they like click. Yeah. It's like, oh, you I'm going to hang on to them. Yeah. And it's like, you kind of like want to like sacrifice something. Like, what do they need? What do they need? Okay. Well, we got to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> you, you keep them because it's 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 the kids get along and then both parents yeah. are that's awesome. Impossible. Yeah. That's, that's it's it's possible. It's hard to find like another couple we get along with. Yeah. You know, it'll be like, well, I like the husband, not wife. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to throw a kid in there. It's I like, know. You're telling me I'm going to like three people (laughs) in this year (laughs) not a chance Um, well I'm excited to see what uh, Nick Thune has to say about this Um, we'll be right back with the wonderful Nick Thune you uh, you heard today's guest uh, at the top of the show he is very funny a comedian, actor, musician. He's also a dad. Please welcome to the show the fantastic and very talented Nick Thune. Thank you. Only 40 minutes late. That's okay. <laughs> this is something okay. that the viewers need to know. I am not perfect. <laughs> Even I, though it's going to come across that way for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> uh, for a podcast that has four parents on it, 40 minutes late is actually like on time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're talking to Nick about uh, becoming or trying to become friends with your kids' friends' parents or how it never, ever happens. And when it does, you have to hold on to those people. How old is your kid first and foremost? My son is 10 years old. Mm. Okay, 10. Mm-hmm. Coming yeah. in. 10 years old, just turned 10. And I, I'm very involved because I just coached his soccer team. So okay. I coached his 12. It's a 12U soccer team. And this is, I'm talking like, this isn't rec league bullshit. This is, <laughs> this is AYSO, serious, serious. 
And I will say this. We went undefeated. <gasps> wow. And we wow. won the championship. Wow. Wow. Nice. Do you get on the team and play? I have no idea time? why. No. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't. I Honestly, I, did, I took the job because I was like, well, I'm already going to practices. I might as well not get paid to do it. To, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I might as well be involved somehow. Yeah. And it's like easy way to get involved. But uh, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. But I, you know, the text threads, the conversations with other parents, um, there was a divorced couple on the team and the dad like loved me, which made the mom really not like me. <laughs> and also this kid is... 11 years old and has his hair down to his like mid back and all he wants to do is cut his hair and his mom won't let him. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And she's actually even said that he won't be as handsome. Oh, oh no. God. Oh no. This is what the dad told me. And so <laughs> the dad. I know like no literally <laughs> I'm getting like maybe not a reliable source. <laughs> you're getting you're getting yeah, you're getting pinned in between these people, right? But then I talked to him and I was like, "Hey man, did you want to get your hair cut?" And he was like, yeah, my mom won't let me. And I was like, all right, I'll fix that. Thinking I could, and yeah. I could not. Yeah, you couldn't say <laughs> it was like a shocker thing. Yeah. Right. I was like, yeah, okay, you, went, <laughs> you got first place in the league. You're getting a little cocky here. You're getting a little cocky. Soccer is life. Soccer is everything. I take care of your hair. Yeah, you I take care of everything. What'd you say to her? Well, I... <laughs> I waited till I was around him uh-huh. Uh-huh. and her uh, after a game, and I was like, "Hey, I thought you said you were gonna get your hair cut to him, uh-huh. like, like wink, wink." Remember you said, "Yeah," and he was like, "Oh yeah, I don't know if I'm going to," and I was like, "Oh man, we were all excited. It's kind of disappointing you haven't." <gasps> <laughs> and I was like, just kidding, man. I hope you get it cut, though. <laughs> <laughs> Basically that. And his mom was just standing there, and she immediately like pulled him out of the, like, don't want to give him oh any ideas God. sort of thing. Oh, yeah. my God. That's such a crazy... I guess it's like that thing, right? It's like you don't want to have your kid's hair cut because you like identify it with like a younger version of them, maybe? That is a know. thing that drove me insane. Well, first of all... I made the mistake of cutting my son's hair the first time, mm-hmm. and my my ex wife. This is where it all went down. <laughs> uh, she were you married at the time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and she, I mean, he was under one. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. And she was like, I was like, you know, there's just like some hair over the ears. Like, let me just trim it up a little bit. And she was like, okay. And what she heard was like, I'm going to trim a couple hairs. What I thought I was conveying was high and tight. Mm-mm. Like, I just thought I was going to be able to throw a, a fade on a no, baby. Uh, no big no. deal. And it turns out it's the worst haircut. Yep. So we had to go in and get his head shaved. Oh, no, no way. A ba- oh they God. shaved a baby's head? Yeah, they were like, I mean, you know, I, I took him in and I was like, listen, I messed up. And somebody, you know, obviously his mom's not very happy and clean us up. <laughs> wow. I, just, I also just realized, like, looking at you, like you telling someone to get their hair cut is very funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want my hair. Yeah, you're right. Well, it's there's also, a lot of cut, there's a lot of hairs that have not been cut. It's a, it's a turn on the classic. Like moms always want their son. You need a haircut. You know, like that's yeah, like a turn. what moms always say yeah. in like sitcoms or movies or like, I can't wait for you to join the military, so you have to get your hair cut. And for like yeah. an LA mom to just be like, Nope, he's Axl Rose to me <laughs> <laughs> forever. Yeah. He's my little rocker. When I was yeah. a kid, my dad bet our barber he, he like bet him uh on a boxing match it was like roberto duran and uh-huh. marvin Hagler, some some old 1980s boxing <laughs> match and he bet him a year worth of free haircuts <gasps> for me uh-huh wow. and my dad won the bet and guess who got shitty haircuts <gasps> for a whole year no. i got my hair just looked this but guy so was just often, like this so guy often. was just like Bleh. i could feel, i could still feel the how anger. Aggr- the anger just going oh. through these buzzers and, and then like uh, you know and my dad had passed away and I was like mom do you think dad got me free hair cuts because he didn't want an angry man to cut his hair and she was like absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so your son is old enough to have friends yeah mm-hmm. um and I'm guessing you know if you felt comfortable first and last name ranking all of their parents for <laughs> us right now let's start yeah. hottest to ugliest I, what's Beyonce's last name <laughs> <laughs> I don't know she changed it to Carter. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Well, I mean, she's definitely the best. Uh, <laughs> it's so like these people, you know, on such a surface level. Yeah. And um, it's funny when you're a comedian and because, you know, everyone kind of learns each other's jobs. And I know that you guys probably deal with this exact same way. It's like 
you have to tell them what you do for a job or else you're an asshole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't just be like the cab driver in a city where you're like, I. by the way, I always say I'm a journalist because I just think I always wished I was, you know? <laughs> you just, you do? Yeah. Oh, any city I go to, you're like, why are you in town? Yeah. Ah, uh, journalist. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because then they're like, oh, for what? Well, that's the times. Just <laughs> 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 it's the Iowa times, but I don't, I don't say the first part. <laughs> You know, they they find out what you do, and that well, ours is like like if somebody's like, "Hey, I'm a painter," and they're like, "Oh my god, I love cobalt blue." Yeah, no yeah, one yeah, says yeah, that yeah. about yeah, yeah. paint. Yeah, but, you know, I'm a comedian. And they're like, "Oh my god, I love this name." Yeah, and you're like, "Oh, I know exactly who you are now." Yeah, yeah. I know exactly yeah. what your taste is by yeah. the comedian you mm. just told me you liked. Yeah. yeah, and it's a lot of it's the same. I mean, I'm I'm not going to name any <laughs> names, but they're all. But, the, you know, it's like you hear that. But I remember I when he was in um, like preschool, I had did this really fun 60 um, day stint in rehab. And I that was in preschool. He was in preschool. He was, in so preschool. He was like four years old, three years. old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five, five years mm-hmm. old. And I it was like a big everyone at this place knew about it. Oh, this, like, for wow. real? This like Los Feliz. Oh, no. you know, yeah. Kind of like gossip thing yeah there was a lot of uh, a lot of gossip going around about me and so then i had to go do pickup after i got out of rehab and there's this one dad who his wife is a influencer and he drives a toyota trd Uh which just already it's like it almost says turd it (laughs) it is so close to saying turd that that is i wanted to add the you there but i remember like walking in and he looked at me and he goes hey man how are you and i go i don't know get back in your toyota get out and ask me again in a normal way (laughs) <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, yeah you don't know me back. at all. Yeah. You we don't, don't know, know me. Yeah. yeah, and I'm obviously going through a little bit of a rough patch right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Just because I'm out of rehab does not mean that I am not still a fucking monster in my head and yeah. don't know what's happening in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like that, like acting like we know you, mm-hmm. acting yeah, like yeah. you know, like we understand the problems. That are, it's just like let's just all be surfacey as we can and and get through it. Yeah, and, it's like daycare. You know, you're not going to yeah. see these fuckers again. You know, it's like, yeah, we're all dropping you the place closest to our house or work. I'm not invested in any of you. I know. We had sex roughly around the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we all. That's that's our connection. Yeah. I got, uh, I, I like to send notes to them in class. Mm-hmm. But turns out they're supposed to be like kind of important, you know, because yeah. like, I got like I'd done it a couple times and then I brought it in. And so wait, you you call? No, I just office. walk into the office. I just oh, walk in the office and, and I go, hey, can you delivered. give this to Towns and okay. whoever's class? And uh, it says stuff like you're a stud, yeah, yeah. you know, awesome. like whatever. Yeah. But yeah. she read one and she's like, yeah, we can't send like these. It has to be like <laughs> mom's picking you up. <laughs> or... Like be you're informative. a king. Did she read? Did she read the you're a stud? <laughs> she one? read one of them. I don't know. <laughs> have you ever met? Have you ever met like parents that you thought were really cool and then like tried to make it happen with your kid? Where you're like, oh, I really like these people. We get along really well. And then like, we'll have a play date. See, see if they like hang out. And then they're just like beating the shit out of each other. And you're like, oh, this isn't gonna. Like, how long do you like yeah. keep it going until you're just like, all right, I guess we can't be friends. I think I've never had it that direction. I've always had it the direction where I'm trying to get them to be friends with my current friends. Yes, with your current Uh, friends. You know, but like, definitely when you go to a party and you're like, oh, this kid's cool, you know, like these parents I can talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found though, you know, once I dropped my ego about the whole thing and like, it's getting to know new people. Mm-hmm. It's not that bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like I don't know. These people aren't bad. They're you yeah. Know, whatever. No, no one is bad. It's more just like it's, uh, that surface thing you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, which can feel exhausting. I find I'm exhausted by like that surface level mm-hmm. of chit chat. It's just that it's just the immediately putting the question back on them because of how much people love talking. It's like, how are you doing? Great. What are you up to? I like I practice that in my car. I'm like getting on the way to school. I'm like, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing great. What are you up to? Yeah. <laughs> I I was at a friend's kid's birthday party and I like talked to this mom and I really liked her and then I told my friend afterwards I was like I really liked you know so and so's mom and she goes oh (laughs) I was like wait 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 she was like no that's great you liked her 
Like a, a lot of people don't. You know, like it was like I, I had like oh, picked yeah. the wrong mom. Oh, I I'm love like, that. she was like really. She's cool. like, yeah, a lot of people and, fall like, for her up front. <laughs> yeah. Wait <laughs> yeah, until she almost, reveals herself yeah, a little it more. Yeah, seemed like I was stupid. I was <laughs> like, oh, okay, I guess I read that situation wrong. <laughs> it's funny. It's that thing that's like a, if you have like a I don't like the idea of barely knowing somebody and and like hooking up with them mm-hmm. and then them staying the night. You know, like some people are just like, well, you can't are so good at being like, all right, we're good. You know, I've never been able to do that. And so I feel like that's the same thing with like inviting like my son just had a birthday party and I send on the invitation drop off only. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But then the parents walk in, and now it's like I'm in like a oh we just had sex, and now you can stay over if you want. Yeah, you know, like, hey, you can come and hang out. Next thing you know, all the parents are hanging out at the birthday. I'm like, this is exactly what I didn't want. Yeah, you put drop you put drop off only because you did not want the parents there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. then it's just like kids are doing stuff, and you're hanging. hanging out. Well, because then you just an yeah, yeah. It's I think once they start to get older, because I've heard of instances too where like a parent dropped off a three year old, oh, and then yeah. they're like, no, you gotta watch your three year old you yeah, can't yeah, just yeah. G- give me a loose toddler Olive yeah. just hit the age where that where drop offs can happen mm-hmm. and it still feels magical it's like are you sure I'm just gonna you're gonna take her I'm just gonna t- I'm gonna leave her here I don't have to pay for you. two hours I don't pay you I know and it's also that like I I took my son and a couple friends to go to Fred 62's you know like a yeah. diner mm-hmm. to eat or whatever mm-hmm. And they were just supposed to come over and hang out, but I sent the mom a text. I was like, hey, I was going to take them to Fred 62. I just wanted to make sure you're okay with him being in my car. Because in my mind, like, that's a huge deal. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Like, just throwing some new life in my car. They don't know what my driving is like. Location change, you got to ask. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm just, I can't believe you're brave enough to do that, or whatever was her response. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, all right, cool. So you might, yeah, we'll yeah. see if he makes it. Like, grab the wheel. <laughs> I'm just saying, so you know, I'm not a big stickler on seatbelts. So. <laughs> um, this is the struggle wand. It's a wand uh, we found in a dumpster. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to give it to you. And you uh, have, it is your floor to talk about anything you're struggling with in parenting right now? Well, I. This is definitely a problem that younger parent, younger kid, I think, have more. But my son still sleeps in my bed, okay. which is because when I got separated and divorced, I moved into a studio for the whole pandemic. Yeah. So it was just us in a bed. Oh, my God. You got divorced, and then it was immediately the pandemic. Yes. <gasps> oh, wow. Whoa, yeah. dude. That's hard. And I moved into... Yeah, so I moved into a studio. Yeah. And it was just a bed. I mean, the kitchen was the bed. Mm-hmm. All of it was the bed. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> And so, it, but it turned out to be great. Like, I overheard him one time saying to somebody, like, yeah, when I'm at my dad's house, we hang out all the time. Oh, because there's awesome. nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that part. They were like, oh, that's so great. And like, we, we're trapped together. And so, <laughs> and so when we finally moved into a house that has bedrooms, yeah. it was so weird. Like, he was over in his room, and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, but then he still, like, won't sleep in his room. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, why? I like sleeping in your bed. You have yeah. a really comfortable bed, you know. And I'm like, I know, but I just, it's nice. Yeah. It is really nice. It if, is so, so sweet. sweet. If, and, the, yeah. if, it, if he sleeps, do you know what I mean? Like, if he actually oh, goes, yeah. like, Gus will, the cu- shit out of you? Gus will, like, crawl into bed and then just sit <laughs> up and look. <laughs> And then you're just like, you just like open your eyes like and a he's just cat. sitting yeah. like looking at you. And you're just like, oh, Jesus, what are you doing? Like, yeah, he just like sits and like he'll get up at 5 a.m. and sit. Nope. You know, it's a bravery thing, too, though. It's not, I don't know if it's bravery, but he does have fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of being, because he got locked in a closet when he was young. Oh. At his, at a, and I'm not going to say whose house, but uh, it wasn't mine. Uh-huh. <laughs> No, but it was a total accident that he was stuck in a closet, like an for one of those long? one of those under the stair closets that oh, has like yeah. oh, the worst. no light for ten minutes. Uh-huh. And when he was found, he was obviously devastated, oh. and there were wood chips all over the ground because he'd found it was dark in there. Yeah, he found the skateboard that was in there and was pounding it against <gasps> oh my his god his wooden wow. door, and it was, I mean it, he won't go he like he won't close bathroom doors. He still has a problem with doors, so. You know, those are those things where you're like, how do you... Yeah. I don't draw attention to it. It's never talked about. I just am there when he needs me. But like, yeah, how do I get through that? I don't I, know. I feel like I know a lot of people that sleep yes. with their children. 
and there does seem to be like a real stigma about it. But it's like if you're getting sleep and he's getting sleep, then that's really all that. That's all matters. that matters. I remember being part of that stigma where, yeah, because he immediately we he was in a crib in his own room mm-hmm. like so fast, right. and yeah. then was good to go until this is happening a lot too. That right. all it's happened, like, and then mm-hmm. he reverted back. Yeah. yeah, and before that, I was like, these idiots have their kids in their room. Right. It's not me. <laughs> 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 Mine's trained. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. That's what we look like. The final thing we like to do, Nick, is uh, it's called timeouts. Take anything you don't like about parenting, you put it in a timeout. Uh, we'll go first so you have a little second to think. Well, I'm putting Taylor Sheridan <laughs> on right. timeout. You know, the creator. Oh, we know. Of Yellowstone. Oh, um, that guy. <laughs> yep. I'm putting, okay, once I became a dad, my whole taste changed. I used to be cool. I love Werner Herzog, Iranian independent films, you know, Dogma 95. I was a real cool guy. Have a kid, all of a sudden I'm like, Ford versus Ferrari. Like, I just like, cars oh, and yeah. guns. And part of that is Yellowstone, which I a show that I didn't even think I would yeah. love, mm-hmm. but I just went crazy for it. And I, I kind of like, like it. You loved it. I know. I yeah, was, I was when I when I first when we first started hanging out more because of this podcast, I was like, I kind of like Yellowstone. He's like, Yellowstone's great. Like that I was pilot, shy because that pilot is an is like the, a perfect pilot. I feel like of yeah. Yellowstone. Yeah, it's so <laughs> fun. It's got guns. It's got cool jackets. I like, worked with the guy that died in the pilot. <gasps> oh, what really? And I was like, what? He's like, it sucks, man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. He had like a major role as, yeah. a, as a son. Yeah. You know, and then he dies in the pilot and he was just like. I, I desperately want to see it, but my husband says it looks too white. <laughs> it is. And it's like, yeah, look at me. White. That's why I want to watch it. Yeah, yeah, but then you've already the, let the enemy into the house, CJ. Turn on the fucking TV. On the plus side, they kill each other, so that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's white on white violence. <laughs> I love it. And I'm dying for season. I've seen six all the prequels. Uh, me too. 1883, 1923. <laughs> yeah. I, I love watched it. Tulsa it's just King. years. It's years. <laughs> it doesn't even fucking bother coming up with a name. It's older. It's older Yellowstone. I just. I hope he gets back at it because I just found out that the next season doesn't come you out. You tried until putting him in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> How is he supposed to do anything in time out? Yeah, he's in time out. He's got to go to time out to write the show. Yeah, he's got to go. Yeah. Sit in the corner and write season six. It doesn't come out until November 2024. I just found out. I'm November. devastated. I'm <laughs> devastated. So, it's going to come quicker than you think. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I feel better. Thank you. Um, I am putting hand, foot, and mouth disease oh, hell yeah. on time out. First of all, really bad name. You can't just name the parts that are affected and then throw disease on the end of it. Also, it does it transcends hand, feet, and mouth. Also, yeah. butt, yeah, cheek and hole, uh-huh. leg, just a disgusting, just a disgusting, disgusting. I ended up having like a really bad sore throat. Like I think I was one of the Oh my god, you got it in your throat? I got it in my throat. Oh, that's the worst. It was just like, there's those moments where you're like, I'm ready to have another baby. And then your child has open mm. sores on its hands. Yeah. And you're like, no. <laughs> single, single child. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Just a really gross one. And, and it's one of those ones where they're like, nothing we can do. Just try and keep them hydrated. It's like, no, we need a cure. Isn't it weird that there's so many like rash Just keep them hydrated. We went to the, early on, we went to the to the doctor about something. He just had a rash all over him. And he's like, they're like, yeah, that's a kid rash. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, what? They're like, yeah, kids get yeah. rashes. That they, uh, they pick it up from rolling around in shit yeah. and dirt all the time. <laughs> and uh, we don't know what it is and there's no and cure for, for it. it. <laughs> and, and they'll do the thing too where they're like, oh, the rash, that's a good sign. Yeah, that means, that it's, means almost it's over. over. <laughs> You're like, okay. what? Kind of. <laughs> the open source is the end <laughs> of this terrible oh disease. Oh my god! We yeah, we were in Las Vegas and like it all clicked in my mind, like Doctor House. Like I truly was like, <laughs> oh no, he has hand, foot, and mouth disease. As we're in a Barnes and Noble in Las oh. Vegas, and then I look over at him and he has a binky in his mouth, and he doesn't have binkies. Oh no! And so he had hand, foot, and mouth disease, and it also just picked up a rogue <gasps> Vegas. Oh. Binky and had it in his mouth. Could and be one of the worst cities. Yeah. I took it out of his awesome. mouth. Could be a forty-year-old <laughs> raver. Out of his mouth and threw it. <laughs> like I just was like, ah! like it was a grenade. Like I was like, get it out of here. Ah, that's amazing. <sighs> 
Um, I'm going to put... Um, I, I almost got credit card scammed. Oh, uh, no. And I was like, it was dinner time. And so I was like doing scam. like Give eight things. Yeah, I will. So everyone can know about it. So they left a voicemail for me. Mm-hmm. And they said, uh, just calling to confirm your new account with Capital One. Um, if, uh, you know, if you have any issues or whatever, give us a call back. And so I just looked at it written all down. And I was like, oh, so I just hit the button to call back while I'm like cooking dinner. And I'm like on the phone and it goes through a whole Capital One thing. It's like, dan, 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 welcome to Capital One for, 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 you know, for, uh, and, you know, for English, press one. And I'm I like, press Espanol. one. <laughs> and then like went through all the different things. And then I finally get to somebody and they're like, what's your name? I'm like, here's my name. I'm like, what's your phone number? I give them my phone number. And they go, yeah, someone tried to open a, an account in your name. Um, that was not you, and they're like, no. She's like, okay, well, let's we'll transfer you to our fraud department, and we're like, okay. So then they transfer me Whoa. to a fraud department. Wait. On the other side, they're like, we got a live one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so someone else is literally like handing the phone. Doing fraud. So department. the scam is they pretend you got scammed already. Yes. Oh yes. My it's fucking crazy. Gosh, mm-hmm. So then I get to it, and I'm still doing stuff, and then they say, uh, "What's the last four of your social?" And then, I, and I, and out loud, I said, last four of my social. And then Lauren, like, heard that for the first time and looked up. And she's like, did you call the number on your back of your credit card? And I was like, no, this is from my voicemail. She's like, hang up right now. And I was like, I was like, oh, this is a little bit. I've li- There's a Capital One thing. I <laughs> yeah. heard it go ding, 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 <laughs> Capital One. I'm at your fraud department. I was like, whatever, Lauren. I, I hang the phone up. Call my credit card. No, it's totally a scam. I called actually Capital One and they're like, no, but we need to know the phone number. We need to know how it yeah. happened, all mm. that stuff that went down. Um, but yeah, man, that's exactly how they get you while you're doing other things mm-hmm. as like a busy parent. Yeah. And then like, boom, they like, then they open up a real account in your name Sweet. at Capital yeah. One. Uh, Nick? You know, I was trying to like look through my whole weekend to think of like, because I just spent a, you know, like six or five days in a row with my son and I was like just chips just chips mm-hmm. you're putting chips in time out I, I have a hearing thing I, <laughs> I'm i very sensitive yeah. to like all noises yeah and it's a very big struggle because I try to keep it on my own. I don't want anyone else to feel like they're infected with my... Mm-hmm. I put myself in... Like, I don't eat lunch with certain people because of the way that they eat. I never will tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> but I just have, like, made choices to take myself out of these anxiety-ridden right. situations. But I can't with him. Yeah. And he just will start eating chips in my ear. And I'm just like, okay, it's a kid. You love this kid. Like, you know, you, it's fine. It's fine. You... He, yeah, Cheetos, great. Oh. <laughs> the crunchiest Cheetos. And it's the, it was the only thing in this whole week that like really got to me. That's great. Wow. That's good That's though. A win. That's yeah. a pretty good kid then. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you so much for being here, buddy. Uh, anything yeah. you want to plug before you go? Uh, I mean, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Just to look up Nick Thune. There we go. You can find everything. I should I'll, probably, I'll do his plug I should be promoting him. more. But, uh, <laughs> just get in. Just kind of get into my world. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? like, uh-huh. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. That was great. Handsome boy. <laughs> <laughs> that jacket was cool. I was yeah. like, He's a good dresser. He's a good dresser. God Looks damn. like a... Uh, Welcome to Joshua Tree. I'm Joshua. You know? And, and yeah. like, he owns a place. But it's like our kids are too young for our kid to be friends with Towns. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. it's like, well, we've, okay. We missed the boat on that. Yeah, he's off the market. He's off the market <sighs> for us. Listen, if you guys want to have your own story right here on the show, you can call us at 424-570-KIDS. That's 424-570-KIDS. Or email us at I love my kid at Wondery.com. And uh, make sure to start it with I love my kid butt. And if you do, Maybe we'll use it on the show just like this. I love my kid, but he tried to kill me too. I was listening to your episode about one and done, and Chris shared his story about Val's birth experience. Thanks for that, by the way, Chris. And mine was very similar, and uh, the doctor said that I probably would not have survived if I had been at home. I was at the hospital, thankfully. The first person to ask me when I was going to have more kids was the janitor cleaning up the room while I was uh, in the hospital being pumped full of blood and meds. And she was telling me I had to have more because the son that I had just birthed 
nine hours ago would be lonely without a sibling. Oh my god! And I realized that in there that I was going to have to come up with a better reaction. So Chris's clapback that he was joking about saying is what I say to people now. My son's two and a half. And when they ask me why I don't have more kids or when I'm having more kids, I just tell them I almost died during having the first one. And then I was horribly depressed for six months. And I figure <laughs> if they're going to ask me horribly inappropriate yeah. and personal questions, mm-hmm. they're going to get personal responses. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks so much for the show, guys. <laughs> love you guys. Bye. Oh, oh we so love sweet. You. Thank Bye. you for that and that's you did the right fucking you yeah. let them know yeah. they're gonna ask a question you clap back Ugh. just like that that's so just awesome. have an open wound and then then be like when's the next wound opening that's yeah, just so... swiffering <laughs> your blood when when they were wheeling me out <laughs> wheeling me out of the hospital they go see you in three years they did what? yeah no they did not. yeah because they're you know i think there is that like schedule but it's you know it's jarring yeah. when everything on you is in pain oh it was so terrifying it's the beginning is so scary and nobody talks about it at yeah. all and so hard well thanks for listening everybody i'm kurt brown i'm chris garcia i'm megan gailey and remember your kid will eventually resent you no matter what you do so many